This is Chicho again. Welcome to uh, another comic book reading session. Now, what I'm in the process of doing right now is putting together uh, set number three of um, reading comics. And I've picked out some fantastic books to read to you guys. Um, and uh, this book is one of the books that we're going to take a look at in that lot. Um, but I wanted to do, um, you know, a follow up or I guess a preview of, um, of this book, because what I did was, uh, this was, uh, I just recently picked this up a couple of weeks ago and, um, we did a video where we're reading, uh, the first 20 pages of this book, sort of, uh, that's sort of a comic book, uh, size comic books, you know, 20 pages to 30 pages or something, one issue. So we, so we read the first 20 pages of this and it was absolutely fantastic. And um, I really couldn't put it down. So I just finished it yesterday. Uh, every opportunity I got, I basically really didn't read anything else. I just picked up this one and read this one. Um, and there are a couple of uh, pieces that I wanted to share with you from this because it's absolutely fantastic. It really blew me away. And uh, just to give you a little lowdown on Joe Sacco, Joe Sacco is, uh, is a comic book journalist. He basically um, is considered to be the, you know, the grandfather and the, the person who gave birth to comic book journalism. And the way I came across the Fixer and other stories, and the Fixer is, um, or anyway, this graphic novel is a compilation of uh, three stories. Okay, um, it's got the Fixer, Shoba, and Christmas with. Um, Karadavich, Karadzavich, Karadzavich, and uh, I came across this book um, when uh, I was in a comic book store um, a few weeks ago, actually it was, uh, I guess, a couple of months ago, at the beginning of summer, really, uh, and, you know, I was talking with the comic book store owner and was picking up my weekly pull list, and, um, we start talking about Joe Sacco and he told me a story about Joe Sacco that blew me away. Um, and, and there was another person there that, you know, got into the conversation and that usually what is, what happens at comic book stores. Once you start talking about a, an artist or a comic book or a storyline, um, if someone's interested, they usually join the conversation and, uh, it can be intense. It could be awesome. It could be, uh, not so good. Uh, this conversation between three of us that was absolutely fantastic and it introduced me um, to the fixer and uh, you know I ended up ordering it back ordering it and I grabbed this book so in this third session we do read the first 20 pages here okay now after I did that uh, video uh, I couldn't put this book down and I kept on reading, kept on reading, kept on reading. And, you know, I finished the book, uh, yesterday and I read the notes and, you know, just a couple of pages of notes that he has here. And it's absolutely magnificent. But, um, I wanted to read, you know, a couple of, sh couple of shorter segments to you, not 20 pages, but like four pages, three to five pages in two different places. Uh, the reason being is the the first one we're going to do that little read absolutely blew me away because I really got immersed uh, in this book and what happens with comic books in general if you're reading them uh, especially graphic novels like this uh, for me anyway I usually start off reading slow and uh, and I take a look at the pictures and that's what I do in general throughout the whole book, but I really don't get the flow of the read for a comic book right off the bat because every artist, every creator, every, every writer has a certain feel to the way they like sharing their stories. And Joe Sacco's is very unique. So I sort of got the feel of, how Joe Sacco was presenting the information further down the book and it started you know yeah, pulling me in and I you know I found myself being lost in the story and the story of these characters and 
and what basically happened was I forgot I was reading a comic book journal a journalistic piece of work that it was about real life events right and there was a moment where I reached where I sort of did a double take and I went no way this is for real right because all of a sudden I remembered that this was this was real events and this book is about uh, the siege on uh, Sarajevo so the Yugoslav and the war in Yugoslavia the civil war the Bosnian civil war I guess whatever you want to call it was a huge event in in the on the world stage and this graphic novel is um, covers that war uh, in, in a perspective that if you just followed the news and read the economics and politics of things you wouldn't have received because this is first-hand stories from people that lived it right so when I was reading this because this is in comic book form I forgot about that until I reached a certain point where a story where a little short segment four pages I read and I just did a double take and uh, I'm gonna read that to you right now okay now we've read up to page 21 uh, in the previous video in the third comic book session that we're doing okay so after that we got a nice feel of what was being done and the main character in this first story is Naveen which is this guy and he's a Sarajevan that Joe Sacco and this is Joe Sacco right here and he draws himself in his comic book so we read up to here um, and Naveen is called you know he's acting as a fixer he's showing uh, Joe Sacco around and telling him stories and introducing him to people so uh, Sacco can interview them right as them walking through Sarajevo interview them and you know do his job basically right so what we're gonna do is um, flip through and find that segment where the story occurs that I want to read to you okay. and here's the part okay now just to give you a heads up um, this little segment goes from this panel to here okay so it's four pages plus a panel now this little short segment is called the strange case of yuka prazina okay the strange case of yuka prazina and for me when i read this when i got to the end that's when it clicked to me actually when i got to the white horse is where i went what and i realized that i was reading real accounts so i ended up looking up Yucca Prazina online and there's an extensive wiki page about him and there's videos on him and I thought this was an exaggerated story and when I saw the videos I realized that this guy was uh, well he was a main character in on um, in the siege on Sarajevo Okay. and if you look up the videos on him the ranking the you know it's spill it up almost evenly with 50% of the people liking it and 50% not liking it right and it really depends on your perspective now just to give you a little background in the previous pages to this you know we get introduced to Yuka and uh, you know we find out that he was a petty criminal that uh, basically became a warlord in Sarajevo and he protected the region of Sarajevo from basically Sarajevo what happened was uh, uh, you know there's a lot of different factions involved so I'm not gonna uh, talk about the different factions but basically Sarajevo was surrounded and was being bombarded right so there was a siege on Sarajevo and 
what happened was out of necessity criminals gangsters uh, took control of certain regions and protected those regions right from massacres but in the process they end up committing massacres so yuka is a controversial figure he's considered a war criminal uh, by some a hero by others uh, i think more so a war criminal uh, because he had to do some horrendous things i believe and you can look that up but basically that's sort of what's happened up to this point and there are other war criminals or warlords that uh, Sako covers and he talks about or heroes so when I started looking up the videos on the site it just blew me away it's a character that back in the 1990s early 1990s that's when um, the Bosnian Civil War or the breakup of Yugoslavia happened and I was following the news then but we really never in the West we really never got a feel of what was going on on the ground right we got sound bites and and propaganda mainly in the west of the perspective that were that was the perspective of the governments involved in this region of what they wanted us to know right and it was incredibly enlightening reading this graphic novel okay so enough of that intro let's read this okay this little segment and while we're reading it keep in mind this guy's for real right these events are for real okay now the strange case of yuka prazina the marriage made out of necessity between the bosnian government and the strong men is straining soon it reaches a major crisis and the person telling us the story the hand that you see here is this guy naveen right he's the fixer he's the guy who's showing joe Sako around and introducing him to people and you know giving the lowdown on joe Sako of what happened in bosnia and this is taking place in the mid 1990s right and this took place i guess in the early 1990s okay so the marriage made out of necessity between the bosnian government and the strong men is straining soon it reaches a major crisis Yuka felt important. He felt untouchable. He probably saw himself as some sort of, how shall I put it, lone rider who can do whatever he pleases. Yuka's personal heroic and TV appearances, appearances have transformed one-time petty crook into an icon. Yuka is highly regarded, even by educated Sarajevans, because the fact that someone, anyone, would have the guts to stand up and fight was really appreciated. According to Vildana Selimgovic, Vildana Selim, Selim Begovic, a journalist for Danny. And I'm sorry if I'm brutalizing these names. Uh, hard to pronounce for me, right? And uh, Danny, Sako's got a little footnote here. Danny is uh, one of the uh, well-respected magazines uh, in Sarajevo, okay? The government cannot ignore Yuka and his 3,000 well-armed men. It names some commander of a reserve special police force okay and that's yuka right there and he walks around the clot a crutch and he's got a huge limp and uh, if you check out the videos online you'll see him right the government also allows yuka to sit in a cabinet meeting he clashes with general general sefer halilovich bosnia's senior army officer With Halilovic, Yuka was like, who the fuck are you to give me orders? I am police, you are army.
But there is a law that in case of war, the army is superior to the police. You could refuse to accept that fact. When his police superior superiors cannot handle him, Yuka is shifted to the army, which tries to appease him with the command of special units. But he publicly de derides the high command and starts calling himself a general. When his wife is badly wounded, Yuka put, is put on a UN flight with her out of Sarajevo. The idea was to remove him from Sarajevo because he was at odds with every other commander and it, and it was better to send him somewhere where there were fewer commanders and fewer egos. In October 1992, after a short time elsewhere in Europe, Yuka returns to Bosnia, claiming he will break the siege of Sarajevo. He brings with him a white horse on which he plans to ride triumphantly into the city. The only overland way out of Sarajevo is to run over the UN controlled runway, which is under Serb guns and reach Mount Igman, the gateway to free Bosnia. Yuka all but seizes the base. Yuka all but seizes the base on Igman from his own army, beating up some of the officers stationed there. With several score hard followers, Yuka now controls the route out of Sarajevo. He sets up roadblocks and decides who can and who cannot pass. He exacts tribute for safe passage, gold supplies, ammunition. He steals from everyone, soldiers, civilians, the UN, He is now in full mutiny, the king of Igman, taking orders from no one. In a brief military action in early 1993, the Bosnian army uh, manages to arrest many of his su supporters. Yuka is forced off the mountain. Yuka and a few dozen diehard throw in their lot with, with, with the HVO, the Bosnian Croat army. In the war within a war that erupts between the Bosnian Croats and Bosnian government in 1993, Yuka's shrinking gang reportedly aids in the cleansing of Muslims from Mostar. Shortly thereafter, Yuka leaves the Balkans in December 1993, hitchhikers find his body at a rest stop near Liege, Belgium. He has been shot twice in the head. Personally, I would like it not to be true. I can't vouch one way or another, but I don't think he was so stupid to let himself be killed because he was streetwise. He was a kid from the streets. Maybe he finally got smart and decided to lay off. And that's Naveen. And the next page, you know, continues on, goes into another time, 1995, and goes on with another story. And wow, I, most of the videos, when I look this up, uh, Yuka, Yuka Prazina. When I looked this up online, I read the wiki page and I looked up the videos and unfortunately most of most of the videos are not in English, so I couldn't understand what he was saying. Um, 
what he was saying there were some some translations uh most of the dialogue you know i don't know the language so i don't know if it's bosnian serbian uh, yugoslavian I, I don't know what uh, what language they're speaking uh, but i was hypnotized by this i sat down and watched a few videos of just this character because i've been reading about him and his antics and how he got to where he was and you know how war plays out uh, and it was uh, it was very enlightening and it gave me a totally different perspective on uh, what i knew about uh, the bosnian civil war the breakup of yugoslavia okay now another so that that part was uh, from you know the fixer the first story compilation that joe Sacco put together and I believe it was either by uh, published originally by drawn drawn and quarterly or uh, Fantagraphics. I know Palestine was uh, published by Fantagraphics, um, but uh, I'm not sure about this one. It does say it here. Uh, was originally published as a self-titled edition. Uh, the Fixer was originally published as a self-titled uh, separate edition, 2003 drawn quarterly and uh i believe there was individual issues that came out on this i'm not 100 sure now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to the next story soba and i'm just gonna flip through this and maybe read a couple of pages for you uh, so the fixer is the main chunk of the story here and uh it was it was fantastic it blew me away okay um and the next you know he's got uh, sort of an intermission I guess until he gets to Soba and black is the right color to be for the separation and Soba or Shoba I believe this is pronounced Shoba and I looked this guy up too and uh, again everybody everyone in this book is for real right and Shoba was an artist a musician in Sarajevo that got pulled into the war and he you know the first page here tells us why he got pull, pulled into the war okay after this war started i realized anything is possible right at the beginning i didn't know what was happening i stayed two months in the basement i took heroin pills hashish grass everything i could get to forget for a moment what was happening around me when the alcohol ran out i volunteered at that moment i felt my family was in was in a dangerous position if the chetniks came into the city they kill my father rape my sister they kill us all or put us in concentration camps and there was a lot of atrocities committed during that war. So he was an artist that, out of necessity, out of self-preservation, his family's self-preservation, after, you know, sort of destructive, trying to forget everything, right, ended up joining, volunteering for the war. And the story continues here, and it, you know, goes from the beginning, and was Shova telling us, you know how things were at the beginning and how he felt and what happened and it's the chaos just comes out in uh joe Sacco's work and he loves doing splash pages like this and he usually draws himself in them so it's like sort of trying to do a fine waldo page here so i looked around looked around and you follow the dialogue and you find there's shoba right there and there's joe Sacco. it's just his one and a half eyes and nose showing right so it's you know i can't give praise enough to his work and it goes through and you know share some of the stories of you know what happened to shoba what was happening with some of the other characters in this war zone and this one is extremely intriguing as well um and you know basically you know i am giving you spoilers so if you want to read this and not have any spoilers please stop the video right now and 
uh, go pick up the fixer and read it uh, if you enjoy this right but it basically goes through a story where he's having you know post-traumatic stress disorder or he's in a war zone and he can't handle just sitting around in trenches in minus 20 degrees degrees right so when I got out of the hospital I couldn't sit in the trenches again you can't imagine how it is in the winter you must sit in negative 20 degrees all day and all night non-stop the shells are exploding around you I volunteered for landmine duty right I, or I volunteered for landmines so he couldn't take sitting in trenches so he volunteered to clear landmines and remember this is an artist that got pulled into a war that was going stir crazy traumatic disorder couldn't sit in the trenches with bombs blowing all up all, all around them losing friends so what's the way for he, what how does he deal with it he volunteers for the most dangerous job in the military which is clearing landmines wow And it shows him doing some of the work and what he was going through and it takes you to places where they're dealing with what's happening to them and he introduces new characters was one of the other main characters or like a secondary character a is black a is back recently returned from bhavich or do uh, doboj or Sen senski Sensky most from places with names names one learns overnight when armies crash through uh, when armies crash through armies and a whole war pivots turns and swings the other way I love life this moment this song this schnapps and the front line and the front line it breathes he says so this is Joe Sacco asking the question. And the front and the front line, it breathes, he says. It inhales and exhales. Brings him to the Chetniks. Brings the Chetniks to him. Shoba over there chatting it up with young ladies. The ladies are young at Club Obola. You're the they're the they're the crop of girls too young to have been sent out of Sarajevo in 1992 when the war began they're 1920 now the glorious pinnacle and Shoba is Shoba needing no introduction he is the planter of landmines the sculptor the painter the rock star the disciple of Corto Maltese cap and all who used to stride into places with pistol at the ready under his long coat. And they go out, you know, this guy tells a story, they go out in nighttime in Sarajevo, you know, just bombed to smithereens. And they go into a building and there's curfew and they enter a club right and suddenly so let's read this these guys are walking i love the city i defend the city that's a the other character right there's Sako and shoba and the ladies walking along into up through and suddenly Shoba, he surround, he's surrounded a cutie. He's putting on incredible moves, working on her, dancing, trashing, bumping, grinding, travolting in a way that'll drop an ordinary chick to her knees. Not her though. The planter of landmines, who had had, who had to hang on to the roots of trees during the artillery barrage on Zuch, can barely get a wiggle out of her bottom now 
now A lands his ass, the great fighter and the planter of landmines are introducing coordinated dance moves and playing the homoerotic card to get her messy. But no dice. The boys take off their long coats. Shoba even strips off strips off his 1972 Pierre Card Cardin shirt. It's getting serious now. But where is little Miss Bubblegum? Just beautiful work. Beautiful. And then, yeeha, Shobo found a second wind. And not just the wind, he's pulled the tornado out of his hat. And she. She always gets like this when she dr uh, she's drunk at parties. Shoba got a handful. Now, this little twister could be blowing all night. But what time is it? Jesus, it's way past police hour. And I realize these kids are going to be here all night. On the streets, they can get stopped and arrested. They're in this party for, for the duration till four or five whenever the curfew ends. And then reality hits again, right? Or the war hits again. So those are just a uh, little bit of a teaser, a little bit of an extra uh, from this book. Okay. Um, and I won't give you any more of the story. Um, it's fantastic. Thank you for Joe Sacco for putting this together. Um, thank you. And Joe Sacco does thank those people who shared their stories with him. Um, thank you those free people for sharing their stories because it's the only way we get to feel. Um, what some of these atrocities were like and you know hope that they don't happen again or work towards making sure they don't happen again okay so this was just a little bit of extra reading just a follow-up on the fixer and other war stories and we do end up reading the first 20 pages of this uh, in set number three okay and there's a lot of other goodies uh, coming your way in that set uh, and once I finish putting all together all the videos, um, I'll put together the introduction uh, to that set, uh, showing you some of the books that we did end up reading, showing you some of the books that, you know, I didn't end up reading. Because what I do for these reading sessions, I go through some of my collection and pull out books that I would like to read or reread and put them in a, either a short box or a long box. This was a long box, actually. Uh, put them together in a long box. And I go through and the ones I feel like reading, I, you know, I come here, I set up the camera and set up the space here and read those comics uh, and, uh, you know, share them with you. And if you do like these readings and if you do like these books, uh, support these artists, support these creators, uh, either donate to them or go out there and buy the books that you like, okay, because... Uh, they put their heart and soul into it. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.